first. I think we need a knife round here for Elevate. I would be flabbergasted if they did anything other than that. So let's see what's going to happen then. So SKDC starting off on a T side. We do have JDM, Skyler, or Relics, Dumor, Elsa Mama, and Ocean walking down towards the B-Halls after a few decoys being thrown to come up against Storm, XP3, Rush, Roka, and Elyse. But they do have a passive play this time for Elevate towards the B-Bomb site. Look at that crossfire setup. It's from upper, it's from jail. So Storm looking here from upper inside lower. Smoke coming in from the outside into the B-Bomb site. But Elyse could still spot a few here towards the left side. And now it's going to come down to Storm to try to get these kills. He's getting pushed across by Relics at the same time. The trade comes in, though. But the first one, it's going to be Elyse. Second one, oh, third Elyse. one. One tap, one tap, one tap. So that's USP. And let's see if the bomb is going to go down. It will. XP3 moving across here. Not waiting for a scene. This is something that he does a lot here, XP3. Just rushing through. But at least he calls out on that kill. So three guys moving in right now. Scholar looking to win this three versus one. Able to drop rush. But then Elyse with a 4K. And uh, the defuse coming in. It's going to be one to nothing for Elevate. What an amazing round from Elyse. Was... That setup is very dangerous as counter terrorists because that site is so hard to retake against Glocks and they can get into their defensive positioning and all the 20 bullets that they have versus only your 12 or 13. So the fact that he hit that many shots down the lane into that bomb site is just unbelievable. Just a monster round from him, really, you know, making up for the fact that he actually let a player creep up on Storm, so it was a little mm -hmm. bit of a mistake, but by hitting those shots, he just makes up for it so well. We talked about him as one of their strongest fraggers and showing you why right there in the first round. So now it's going to be uh, a Tech 9 buy here for SKDC, and they will attempt for the subway push. It seems very um, basic right now on T side. Working towards B doesn't work. Let's try A subway. Never towards the middle here against pistols. But Roka, wait just around the corner. First pre fired shot. They're running through and gets the kill. And Roka goes for a trip kill. Rush just wait on the other side of the staircase at Horseshoe. Drops the last two, so that is an easy round, but at least they get the bomb plan on the first round here, which should put them in a situation to be able to full buy if they wanted to, but will not have any nades if they went for a full buy. What a crossfire by Rush and Roka over in the in the horseshoe by them over at A. That was unbelievable. The terrorists just ran into a blunder and got mowed down. Roka was actually in a really dangerous spot. Until you see that Roka, or Rush was right there backing him up, so good play by them. And like you said, if the middle's not going to get a lot of love in these level of matches. The only thing you'll ever really see... Oh, well, there's, there's an AK-47 from JDM taking off the head of Roka. The only thing time you ever really see action in this middle is when the counter-terrorists get aggressive. Or if the terrorists try and retake it late into the round using that door, using the vent to just come out and do some damage. And they got to be careful. The counter-terrorists do as Doomore's already gotten out. It's going to be pushing up Catwalk. There's no one in the A bomb site. They were aggressive in middle, so they've got to rotate back quickly. Rush is still over by vents. He's going to see some action eventually, but he's looking back and forth. He needs to be very careful. He does manage to take one out. That's Elsa. Relics takes out XP3 in the A bomb site, and now it's all on Storm. In a very passive position, he's going to be the one who has to guard him to rush with another headshot. He's doing some damage. Storm gets spotted out upper. Skyler's going to smoke him off, and this A-bomb site's up for the taking. They will uh, try to get this bomb plant, but they're very low right now for SKDC. Uh, they could still try to go for this with the leash, especially the way that he's been shooting so far. Could definitely uh, win this one for the team. But so far, after that molly has been thrown, they're just going to hold it back for a bit. They don't know that Relic is inside that pit, and Relic's... Takes the key player there uh, onto Jay against uh, Elyse as Storm was trying to flank across, but GDM was also waiting there and got that kill uh, to win this one for SKDC. And like you called it here, Moses, the, mis um, the only action you see is if the CTs are pushing aggressively, and they did, and they paid the price because, again, it was that kind of like that one-way smoke uh, because JDM was able to get that kill, but nobody was re actually really seen inside that staircase. You're going to see that a lot, Elevate. They like to be aggressive on their CT side, so you're going to see a lot of those... A lot of those pushes, every once in a while they'll get punished for it by losing an opening player. They have a lot of skill on this team to be able to make it back into the rounds by multi-frag from Rush Roker or Liege. Those guys will put in some work to to alleviate the pressure of being a man down, but the SKDC is ready for that. They can find ways to punish him throughout this match. So they're very just... basic. Well, yeah. It is a very basic setup from the Terrace. They're just spread out. They probably don't know that Elevate's force bot here, but they're playing it very cautiously as if it was an eco, as if they're waiting for their pushes, not being aggressive at all, just looking for any kind of information. Nothing's been found yet. XP3 is actually playing very aggressively. Well, we're in jail now. He's got to be careful of those vents. There is one player in there. He could get caught out if he's not careful. But it looks like he's already crossed to the other side over towards mid. 
Yeah, they also flashed out their JDM from T-Stairs into Catwalk for these guys to come out the Silver Door. So they will try to take control of middle right now uh, for SKDC, and they have successfully. So still a 5 versus 5, 40 seconds left on the clock. But as you take control of mid and Catwalk, you will be working towards the A-bomb site. That's what you see right now from that minimap. Elise rotating from uh, J, and they're going to have a two-man stack towards the staircase again. Uh, for Roka and should be Elise right there. And then let's see what's going to happen with the red. So XP3 gets dropped, but it's still going to be the call for SKDC to work towards this A-bomb site. Do more. Spotting one towards the staircase, but Roka is still playing that bait. Rush gets a kill here, and there you go. Easy kill coming through, and now it's a 3 versus 2. 10 seconds left on the clock. Both of them very low on the T side. They're trying to go for the plant right now. I can't believe they're going to actually let him plant. So they gave him some free money right now for SKDC, but also they gave enough time for GDM to get it's a okay. good position. Storm's flanking. Storm's flanking. Legion isn't going to do anything. He's going to wait for Storm to spot him yeah. out, and there it is. Storm running up the stairs with that 5 7 takes him out. I don't think they wanted to let him plant. I'm not sure why uh, Roka waited so long, but it's not a huge issue. They do get the win, and that's what's important. JDM's going to have a lot of money. He'll be able to afford an op, but this should force a save out of them. It's going to be very ballsy if they let JDM buy an op and the rest of them back him up with tech nines. Yeah. It's doable, though, but again, I, I think the way that they pay, play passively on that last round as well, Moses, you called it before, Elevate likes to play aggressively. So no matter what, whether it be an eco or a buy, they really want to play it and lurk a little bit more and try to catch Elevate off guard on their aggressive pushes. So, it is going to be a Tech 9 save going on for SKDC, and they're going to try to push towards lower. Great incendiary grenades being thrown there, so that splits it up there. There's only one guy that made it across, and everybody else pretty much got halted in their footsteps just by the bottom of the, of the lower B staircase. So that gives enough time right now for Storm and Elish to set up the crossfire again inside B. So, I was wrong before, it's Rush and Roka playing towards A on that staircase horseshoe, and Elysian and Storm playing B with XP3 lurking around middle and going to be the main rotator coming across and try to hold it down and give a chance for a rotate. They have a really good read on this round, though. This is a second round in the world. They've had three players over towards the uh, the bomb site that's going to be aggressed upon. And that's a huge play on uh, with these long rotate time. Uh, Storm's going to pick the first one off, watching that upper. Not able to get out. He doesn't get a third before he gets taken out by JDM. Nice hold by Storm. A lot of damage done by those Molotovs. You can see all the assists running through. It's going to be Relics hiding in the corner behind this smoke. And this eco round's all but done. They're not oh. able to get the bomb down, so no extra money. And Elysian's just going to finish it off by swinging in and mopping up the trash. Oh, did you just call him trash? I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> kind of felt like I was calling you like an episode of Kyle's of Cards, right? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Hey, you know that scene. I don't want to give any spoilers away, though, if you guys are fans of House of Cards, but... Yeah, let's not even go there. That's, that's a sure way to get in a lot of trouble is giving spoilers out on a stream. Oh, for sure. So 4-1 to one is our score so far for our Elevate. No bomb plan coming in like you called it before, but like you said, GDM had a lot of money from the round before. They only go for Tech 9s. They had 2k at that third round for the rest of the players, roughly 3k for the players after the bomb plan on the third round. So this definitely gives them enough time to go for full There's guns, armor, whatnot. There's that aggression by Elysia. We said they're going to give him a lot of opportunities to get that opening pick. JDM holding the angle with an op, and Elysia actually throws a bad smoke. It plumes into the molly and extinguishes it, and, and, and uh, the smoke is in the wrong positioning. But he decides to peek anyways without that safety net and gets taken out. So one minute advantage coming in for the terrorist team, and they are still lurking it, but you call the aggressive play. Look at Roka. He's pushed all the way up on Catwalk, and at this point, he might get pinned, because they're setting up for another flash here. There is that flash. But they're going to come out the door. He hears the footsteps, and there you go. Back turned, crossfire set up, but the A site is now open. Right, and, and Elevate obviously has a lot of uh, a lot of faith in Rush and Roka to hold that A bomb site. That time it doesn't work, and this is going to be scary. Look the bomb that. and one of the yeah. players working over towards B, and I think the counter terrorists are just thinking they're going to save at this bomb site. XP3 can't jump. And if Storm's going to get that first kill, and now it's going to be XP3 over there, he might have a bomb down situation. The clock's going to be running down, so this is very good. This couldn't work out any better for Elevate. As he comes in, but he's got two players coming from oh. jail. He's got to be very careful. He doesn't get caught out. Smoke saves him, though they're pushing through. Quickly. Doomor knows that he's there. The bomb is down. They're going to try to come across. But JDM with the AWP. Delta 9 HP gets that kill just before he got dropped. One more bullet there, and XP3 probably could have saved it for Elevate. But now uh, the round comes in for SKDC, and they are putting up a fight so far here, Moses. And I find it actually quite surprising that after the way that they killed that crossfire towards A, 
they still decide to lurk the bomb towards B when the bomb was still at T stairs instead of working together and work towards A after. Well, they probably thought that the rotates were going to come in, so they were trying to do a little bit of a mind game, and it just didn't work in their favor that time. I think also the call from Elevate was just immediately to save. Here's that aggression. Not scared again. Even though they got punished last round, Roka pushed up towards that same spot. He's just going to peek and fall back, so nice choice by them turning into a passive, but Elevate that last round. The reason why they had over in B, they were just saying, if they take A, we're just going to give it up and save automatically. But if they come B, they were set up perfectly for it, and unfortunately, XP3 not able to pull it out. Let's get EC very lucky there. Once again, set up in this very passive far back strategy, just waiting for that aggression out of Elevate that they know is coming at some point. Mm -hmm. Roka in the pit's going to be a lot of damage, able to dig, do more, and finally take him down. He's taken very, very low for his troubles. But at the end of the day, they do get the advantage of uh, of the kill and make that two now with the leash dropping the lurker inside the vent. So we do have a five on, make that a three on three as two of them just got dropped towards mid. And now Elise comes back on a trade onto Catwalk from jail. And now it's all up to Rush to try to hold this A site on his own, waiting for Storm to rotate across. And Storm takes the great path to go through the vents to pick up the AK-47. Bomb plant's going to come across. They don't know that Rush is at the staircase. They let him plant. He spots Skylar, takes him down. And Ocean, now the last man standing, has to win a two versus one. Veteran player, the five-year veteran coin from being an old-school player in the 1.6 days, uh, playing with Semphis also in the past uh, on the West Coast side. Gets the first kill, but couldn't turn fast enough for the second one against Storm. And Storm comes in for the defuse right after that. Plenty of time, and Elevate takes the lead now by three. That was a nice two-on-one trade by Elevate, and those are the rounds that early on in the season you might have seen them lose by one player getting overly aggressive at the wrong time, not not communicating properly. Those That's what contributed to so many 16-14 to 14 in overtime losses to start the season. And this late on, this is why they're starting to look scary is because they're starting to nail those fundamentals down. Looking good here, up 5-2. to two. We're seeing another save out of SKDC in this eighth round. Definitely, and at least they get a bomb plant. So at this point, they, if they lose this one here, it's going to be $1,900, which is going to give them a, a, a plenty of cash as well. Uh, also for our, our relics to drop an AWP for GDM if they wanted to. So this is a good... Good call for them to save right now. Going for smokes at the same time. So they're going to try to go for the smokes outside. From the outside through the windows. Cover up that jail. And then just rush into the lower side to at least try to get another bomb plant in. But equipping tech nines, it could be great for them for entry kills. So let's see what's happen what happens now. Storm smoked out here from upper. One nade is going to hurt JDM. Elise winning outside the pit. Dropping one and two, including the bomb carry. Rotation comes in across as well. Dumore gets the entry finally inside B, but Storm decides to peek out through the smoke, and they are now pinned inside pit. This should be the easy round. A Storm trying to mop it through, but Dumore stays alive. Trying to get a second one here with success. Trying to run through the smoke, but never saw Skylar, or should I say, sorry, Roka moving through the smoke himself inside the pillar area and elevate gets that round but that's a great way there that's three guns that they uh, that they drop and look at the money uh, look at the economy of elevate at the same time they have a huge advantage right now in this gun round right you're exactly right that that eco round from skdc very good getting that uh getting those three kills and the economy out of elevate is not strong at all you see one famas a little bit light on utility uh, no smoke on xp3 and this is going to be a very, very strong A take. Four players lurking into these A tunnels. Hitting the extremities of the map, not not messing with the middle. And you see this one player, Ocean, who's going to be their lurker. Roka and Rush have been holding this, this uh, horseshoe very, very strongly at the A bomb site every time they've come here, and it's going to be up to them. They don't have a solid crossfire as they have in the past, but it's another look that they're going to give the offense, and we'll see what they can do with it. I like the gamble at the same time, Moses. You said you said it plenty of times that they've been reading well so far the way that SKDC has been playing. This is speaking about Elevate, of course. This time they're stacking three guys towards A, and this is where the T side is coming across uh, right now for SKDC. So if the in-game leader is still XP3 right now, he's doing a great job trying to predict what his opponents are doing so far. So they are looking towards this A-bomb side. We do have Relics just at the entrance of the A-bomb side trying to look back towards Horseshoe. But this is a huge crossfire setup right now. They also have a boost with Roko on the top of Catwalk. Here comes the smokes, and this should be really good right now for Elevate so far. But Dumore gets the entry kill. The Liege rotates back on the middle kill. Roka on the top boost gets that frag, but now the horseshoe is open for business. Roka has to try to get a few kills right now. Hopefully one or two more. He spots Skyler. They're so low so far. He drops one, drops two, runs out of bullets, and the Liege comes in from that flank to help him out. Look at that. 14 and 8 HP together, and it was just great play 
by Elise to rotate as fast as he could. And on top of that, getting that lurker against Ocean. That's unbelievable stuff from Elevate. I don't know how they won that round. SKDC looked, upon entering, entering that bomb site and initiating that attack, they looked so good for a while. But that rotate, you said it, that flight from Elise coming in so fast, so so swiftly and so strong. He got those frags backed up. Roka, Roka able to survive for so long in that pit so after his So swiftly, it was almost tailored. <laughs> and we said Elise is a player to look out for. He's one of their top fraggers, and here he is already, 15 and 4, nine rounds in, having himself quite a match off the, ta off the back of that opening pistol round. He adds one more here into the vents. I find that interesting. just feeling it. Yeah, there you go. It works this time. They actually had three guys posted inside the vents, looking through the windows, trying to get a gel pick. But there was only really one guy that was spotted. It was an easy kill uh, from Liege in there. But finally, they, fu they get the pick, and they also catch XP3 off guard, moving through uh, outside the, the vents. So uh, that three-man stack, I thought it was funny at first, but it actually came out to be quite effective right now for SKDC. So not only that, they pick up an M4 on top of that and get a one-minute advantage. Yeah, I don't like this at all, though. SKDC was in such a position of power. They had all four players together with those Tech 9s, with those Colts. In middle, they had such an opportunity to split the defense and abuse these long rotations, and instead they've split it up into a two-on-two. -two. No armor on any of them, and they're sending two players over towards B. That's going to be Ocean and Elsa, and they're... Elsa's very low with the Tech-9, while Ocean has the HP and a, and a rifle, but he gets taken out quickly. This does force a, a rotation, but Rush is still staying over at A. He's not fooled by it at all, as Storm's going to take out that second player. Pretty shortly, you're going to see them coming back, and Rush is like going to clean it up anyway, so... I would have liked on that eco round, you have you have strength in numbers no matter where you go, and instead you split up and you put yourself in a little bit more of a dis... Uh, not, as, not as much advantage when you split up like that. I understand they're going for the fake there, but stick together and got, take what works for you. But Elevate's able to bring that one back. It was a scary situation for a little bit. Some good comms from them. It's now 8-2 to two for Elevate. Yeah, and I think there there was a miscom coming in for SKDC because after getting that pick, the after getting picked off by the two guys that were inside B, knowing that it's a three versus two, they should have maybe tried to walk out inside the A bomb site still because they they should have known that somebody was still playing inside there. They still had plenty of time to go for a big game as well, and then go for a bomb plant right after. At the end of the day, elevated played it smart. Rush never moved, and JDM's the first one to fall in this round right now with an aggressive push towards middle at the beginning of this round. At that point now, we still have the Lurker here uh, with Ocean, but this time the Lurker has the bomb on his back too, so they have to try to get something done here towards this 8 bomb site. They have that same boost for Elevate with Roka on the top of the catwalk, but the entry kills have to be strong, and they are. Elige takes down, uh, it gets taken down by Relics <laughs> at middle on that flank, so the flank didn't come in favor this time for um, Elevate. Now the yeah, bomb is getting picked up. They played that smart. They were aggressive. Got that opening pick and fell back. Elige re-aggressed later on in the round, and he gets punished for it. A pop flash on a catwalk. Roka's not able to spot anyone out. Rush being an absolute monster over towards Horseshoe. Not letting anyone out the halls. Roka picks one off, but here's Skyler with the AWP grabbing one before he gets traded. And like you said, it's all up to the bomb, who is late coming from middle. He's got too much work to do. And a one-on-three coming out of these halls. He's got XP3 and Rush to deal with. They're zoned in on his area. They know exactly where he is. He's going to walk out. He's going to take out XP3, but Rush very Man. quickly responds and ends the round. This is 11 rounds so far that's been played in this in this first half, and 11 rounds where Rush has been playing the same spot. If he's not at the middle of the staircase playing an angle, he's at the top of the staircase playing an angle from right. the pillars looking inside the subway. They have to find some way right now for SKDC to flash that out, blind Rush, yeah. and then get that kill. But yeah, flashes aren't strong enough in this game to, to clear that position out. It, it'd have to be an absolutely perfect flash. Uh, it, but they they don't have the money there. They're at a point where they need rounds, so they're force buying. They need a molly, they need double nades, and there's an entry they need is Doomore opening it up with a headshot and XP3. Storm brought down low, is able to trade it out. But he's got to fall back into this bomb site, and this is a fake here. This is a heavy B play, but they're not committed. Elise grabs one more. That's going to allow Rush be a little bit more mindful and slow on his rotating. Here's the footsteps over towards yep, door. Definitely. Yep. He's calling it out to his team and immediately you see two players from B. That's going to be Roka and that's going to be Leash falling back towards the A bomb site. So this fake has been sniffed out rather quickly. It's going to be up to Elsa coming out of these vents. He's got to make a play here. Exactly. Get off and rotate. Come on, come on, Catwalk and help him out because this is this is looking scary for SKDC as they try and hit this bomb site. Rush is going to get aggressive here. He spots one out at an angle. Not able wow, to get him, but a leash bails him out. Me? He does grab one, falling down the stairs. Beautiful shot. He pulls out the Tech 9 and gets aggressive. JDM takes him out. But the backup from Elise coming over and rotating to this A site multiple times this match has been beautiful. There he falls to JDM's headshot. It's going to be Storm and Roka into a one on two. 
JDM just slowly pushing up the upper side. He's going to get spotted by Rook on Catwalk. He's going to swing and take the fight again, and he's going to crouch and spray him down. So 10-2 to two for Elevate. Their defense is looking strong, except for two small hiccups early on in this half. They ran away with the last six. They've been playing it very well so far. Nothing but bonus coming in for SKDC in terms of money so far. But like you said, they've been... They've been going for four spies so far here, Moses, but they've been buying max out every single time. So Ocean, really at this point, can only go with a Galil with full armor and everything. So they have to try to get a little, a little more, do a little bit more damage here against Elevate. But at this point, they are because if you're looking at the money situation so far for Elevate, you do have a leash at 1,500. All of them, all the rest of them, are below 1,000, with exception of Roca. So if they could actually get a few kills here and even win the round. They'll be looking good for a 10-4 at least in this first half, and they desperately need these rounds. You called it. They've been getting wrecked recently. Now they just have to get things done right now. Well, the strategy, the strategy they're running isn't working out for me. You see XP3 once again with a good read. A third player over at B. He's going to see one through the smoke. Not able to pick him off, but Elyse dealing so much damage. That's a double kill for him. Pulls out the Deagle, but he gets bailed out by XP3. He's going to swing anyway. He's going to get a nice headshot onto Relics. So El Samama again, the last man standing, and he gets offed off yeah. by XP3. Yeah, and what I, what I wanted to say before that execute came in was they haven't done anything in the middle of the map, and I, and I said that portion often gets ignored on this map in the early stages of the round, but you have to pick, make more of a presence there in the middle in the middle stages outside of just having a lurker there for your hits. I think your mom's hits. calling you. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> just... just Destroys my credibility and everything I'm saying right now, but you have to make you have to make a presence as a team in middle at some point late into the round to to not not let them put three people over in the bomb site. It's happened so many times and it's far too difficult. I mean, you look at the utility they have: one nade, two smokes, and one flashbang. This attack is going to go nowhere if if Elevate reads it. Rush is already coming back right now. He's been a beast over here. If he gets a second teammate, you do not have enough utility to take this section of the map. For sure, and like you called it at the same time, Moses, they played very aggressively for Elevate at middle. You can see that crossfire set up again on Catwalk, leaving Horseshoe open, and Rush is just looking towards there, so he hears the footsteps. So they will uh, be tr uh, working this out right now. We already have a two-man rotation coming in across for Laura J as well, so they will get crossfired and get mowed down one by one. Drake coming left and right at least, though, but... The end, at the end of the day, it's still Elevate taking the upper hand. Now a 2 versus 1, but a 1 versus 1 inside the a bomb site. Rush against Relics. Relics has to try to get this kill as fast as he can to try to narrow it down to a 1 versus 1 situation uh, with the time remaining. But at this point, he gives enough time here for Storm to rotate across. Storm does get taken down, but easily traded out by Rush. Now it's going to be 12 to 2 now. What I was trying to say here, um, Moses, is that... With Elevate pushing aggressively towards that middle, maybe SKDC should just do the same thing. Go straight out, fight 3 versus 3. They've been doing such a great job with trades so far for SKDC. It always comes down to that 1 versus 1. If by a certain chance they, move, or they work towards that middle and they get the upper hand with a 2-minute advantage, things would look better for them. But we're already moving down to the last round of the first half, so it's a little bit too late for them to try to go for that now. All right, they're, they're too far in the hole now, but... You're exactly right. I mean, they've gotten a lot of picks, even when Elevate's been aggressive early on. If, if SKDC isn't losing, it, actually, let's stop talking about that because Elysia is going to add another one onto his tally. And AW, or the AWP of XP3 doing a lot of damage here. And it's stuck down to these three players at the T stairs in middle. So this will be one of the few times they're going to have to attack this, this section of the map with numbers. Yep. Roka's got great positioning on it. Elysia is also pushing up along the cat. And XP3's got his hop trained on it. So. There's really no chance of this being successful. No grenades. One smoke of the head of Ocean. He just lobs it out right now, but not much more they can do. Running down the time, too, with the amount of smokes that they're throwing. So these guys are just pinned so far, especially with that spray. They definitely know that all three of them are stacked together. At this point, on a 5 versus yeah. 3, you're not really going to have a lurker going on right now. So. And we talk about how punishing the rotates can be for the CT side. Look at how punishing it is for the terror side. They fall all the way back and they decide they want to go B. They have to wa start walking so early. And this gives time for Elyse to rotate back over from middle over to the B bomb site and be prepared for this. So him and Storm have a nice setup going on in B now. There's no weak spot in this defense for Elevate. You already see more Storm rotations coming in. Yes, he does. And he's going to push this smoke as they come out. He just strafes and runs and guns, grabs a headshot. Elyse one through the smoke. Oh my god. Storm just playing great defense as he's been known to do throughout his career. It's going to be a dominant half for Elevate, 13-2. to two. That is 
nothing really you could say there. Uh, look at the confidence of how Elevate has been playing as well. Just from that last round itself, Storm coming across and just stands out in the open of the site. Definitely not afraid of any flashes that could come in at this point. And uh, was just able to get those kills, so... Yeah, and also he doesn't have to worry about the upper portion of B because the timers run so low, they don't have time to walk all the way up there. Yep. And they knew that all three were going to be coming out of the lower portion. And that's just, you know, that's just smart reads by Storm, smart plays by him. He's been doing that for years now, going on over a decade. Yeah, and so far it seems that uh, we're, we're looking for a blowout right now, which is... You know, it's a broken record for us to say this, but the piss round is definitely crucial uh, for SKDC so far. Not saying that it's always crucial for SKDC, but it's crucial for whoever's on the losing side to actually try to narrow it down by getting the pistol round. But at the end of the day, if we're looking at uh, the other matchup that was happening at the same time between Area <laughs> right. 51 against CLG, that was another 16-2 uh, uh, victory, uh, a blowout coming in here for Counter Logic Gaming. So Area 51, so far only two victories uh, in this uh, in this season uh, of 18 for, for ESEA. But at the same time, I still got to give them credit for them to try out different things, right? Even though they're losing, they took out Minikur, they brought some people in. Well, uh, they... They're trying to work things out for the end of the season, at least for the next, for the next one. Yeah, they were playing with Frost for a while, and they and they brought Summit in to replace Summit, and then Frost got taken from them by Luminosity Gaming, so they had to bring yep. Summit back. And it's just been a, a whole lot of roster changes for them towards the end of the season, trying to find something that works, and obviously didn't pay off for them tonight. But now we go into this pistol rod. We're going to see a battle very quickly. There's a triple stack from the defense in these A-Halls. That's where the terrorists are headed. There's four of them. They have two nades primed as soon as it's spotted. I like Here this. come the nades. Doing a lot of damage, and they're just mowing them down. It's a firing squad. Do more, and Elsa and JDM all combining for four quick frags. It's all on XP3, the only one left, and he gets dropped quickly. So a little bit of life and a little bit creative strategies out of SKDC to start off the second half. Well, you know what? I use that in my ESEA matchmaking, too, when I'm playing with uh, a couple of my buddies. It's the walk till scene with the USP. So the fr so with the three spawns closest to, uh, closest to the A site, you guys are all going to go towards A. You have USPs, you have P2Ks, whatever. Have two nades cocked up. Have the first guy look out with the USP. If he spots him at the staircase, you lob two nades down. Hurts a lot of people, and all you do is go for trades after. But with them being so low, you get the advantage with the pistols, and that's it. Uh, that being said, though, P90s on the back of SKDC. But they are getting the entry kills again with the Tech 9s and the P250. And B site is now open for business. And look at that minimap. They are so spread across the map and so far away. That gives them enough time right now for Elevate to plant and set up. Nobody's committed inside the site. So they're setting up for trades so far. Which the good thing right now would be to smoke upper and lower. Uh, which they do have for SKDC. And then overtake the site against uh, whoever was inside the site that just got killed. That's right. No one's watching the flank, though, and Storm's yeah. going to get taken out by Elsa, who comes in. Now it's just down to this three on two. It looks so good for a little bit for Elevate. Is now looking terrible. They do get one. They got to get the, the diffuser in the smoke. He's almost got it. One second. He doesn't get taken out first. That is so incredibly close. Unfortunate for Elevate. But they do manage to clean it up with that plant. That's a fantastic eco round despite the loss. Oh, yeah. If anything, they could go for Galils right now, knowing that a force buy is going to come in for SKDC. They could go for Galils versus Formosas, AKs versus M4s. This is a good round right now for Elevate. Things are looking good, uh, nonetheless, even though they lost that last round. But the entry kills are just perfect, hurting the economy of the CT side. Right, and, and you can see it. There's two kits. There's not a lot. There's only one smoke and one nade left at this point, and there is a buy out of Elevate off the strength of that. If they win this gun round, that's going to bring them up to 15 rounds pretty quickly, and that's not going to give SKDC any chance, despite how small it was to begin with, at, at making a comeback. Only JDM in this A bomb yeah, set. He's the only defender over here. That's going to be scary. Elsa's pushed up at the, uh, at the vents, and there is one lurker in mid. He does have Doomore with him. That's going to be a late battle that they can find. That's going to be XP3 running over. He gets dinked immediately and taken out, but the real push comes up Catwalk. JDM can't finish a kill. He brings the liege down to 21 HP, and here comes the plant in the defensive positioning, and they're going to have to hold up against a retake. This is anyone's game so far. So there's smoke down towards Jay. Dumor is just waiting on the other side of it, waiting for his teammates. So they are coming through every single entrance as possible in the CT side, so it's one versus one fights. First one loss. Ocean against Roka at upper CT side. Elsa Mama wins the one towards Elevator. Two more loses the one towards Jay. 
Elsa Mama wins the one towards Horseshoe, but then Relics loses the one towards Catwalk. Now it's a one versus one, and they are going to get that kill, but not enough time. And that is going to be the round for that's Elevate. That's unfortunate. That's, that's, a, that's an ace, too, and he does pick up the kit while he's running over, but you're exactly right. Uh, you said it perfectly. They're coming from four different angles. It's one player at each one, and Elevate doing such a much better job of trading. SKDC not even giving themselves the opportunity to trade any of those kills. And Elevate comes up with another win. They've looked so good in these post-plant uh, and even, like, two-on-one situationals from the first half. They've just looked wonderful on their retakes and their bomb defenses. Definitely, and at the same time, you called it that you don't see much middle action on the T side at this count, uh, level of play, but on the CT side, they're pushing two guys towards middle and leaving one guy towards the A site. Now on the save round here, working towards this staircase, the trade comes in, three guys pushing down again, just like the pistol round, sort of works here. We have a three versus three, but the bomb is going to go down towards the A bomb site. So it's retake time for the CT side. We and do once have... again, it's three one-on-ones again. Yeah, so Ocean's coming in towards Catwalk. We do have a JDM moving in from Catwalk to just support him, but a little bit further back. Elige winning the fight against Skylar inside the CT spawn. One guy now spotted towards Horseshoe, but after that smoke's being thrown, they know JDM's coming from Catwalk. And now it's a one versus one one more time, but no kits once again. So at this point, it should be a 15 to 4. So Ocean will choose to save the AK 47. And it's a steep uphill battle right now for SKDC. But. I want to know your thoughts of this, Moses. You said it, and I was just calling it before the action started here. They are forcing two guys here on SKDC to control middle when you don't really see action coming in from middle uh, on, the, on the T side at the beginning of the round. Well, I mean, Elevate's, Elevate's not doing anything to force them to stay there. They're just choosing to do it. You, you saw Elevate, even when they were aggressive in middle, if there wasn't any action there early on, they would fall off into the bomb sites. That's why... Terrorist teams don't try and take over that middle early at this level because with smokes and nades and flashes and being able to push up on catwalk, it's just a death trap and you're not going to win that against professional players. So they just avoid it, but SKDC not choosing to fall off that pressure into the bomb sites, and they're getting punished for it at the moment. All right, they push through the subway right now for SKDC. At this point, they do have the force by, so all they have, no, uh, one kid on the back of uh, Relics. One from us now as JDM has fallen down, so that is one gun purchase. Lost Elsa Mama getting the 5-7 kill though, pushing through the door. Setting up the crossfire at the same time, flashing, pushing through. So they are trying to pin down towards middle, and it all has to come down to Ocean. The AK-47 AK that he saved before, he needs to have one or two kills right now. As they're slowly closing in and pitching towards this B bomb site from jail, from lower, Ocean has to play it passively and hopefully catch one off guard and give enough time for a scene to rotate. He eats an 8 down to 43, though. Oh, he's about to get spotted here, and he gets taken down. Elsa Mama, at least, was fast enough on a rotation at jail. Now picks up the AK-47, but he is going to be the last man standing, and he loses the fight versus Roka, and it is going to be...